Jonathan Clyde, owner of the Clyde Design Group, Fine Custom Cabinetry in Oakland, California, and welcome to today's Killen Report. My special guest today is Michael Killen, who is my good friend, the owner of Killen Associates, talk show host of the Killen Report normally, and a wonderful artist, as well as being a former talk show host on the Stanford University radio station. Michael, good to see you. Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for being here. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. We've got a lot of ground to cover and not a lot of time to cover that ground. Okay. Specifically, what I'd like to speak with you about today is what's going on with your interpretation and paintings of the California Climate Plan. But for our viewers, I'd like to give them a little history. So if we could, I'd like to go back to works that you did before sure. this series that you're doing now, dealing with the environment, if that's okay with you. Sure. Great. So let's talk about that. Um, you basically uh, were at the forefront and continue to be, uh, and prior to this uh, series of paintings, you were painting environmental threats, weren't you? Yes, I was not thinking about symbolically articulating California's climate plan. I wasn't thinking about that. I was focused on what was happening in the environment, in industry, business, etc., that was having an impact on our climate. So I would pick a different threat and I would study it and then I would articulate it in a painting. And I'm really proud to say that pretty much everything I painted, Stanford has been kind to display it at its big events, or NASA has been kind to display it. And one of the paintings that I made as part of the threat is this one over here. And this painting First of all, it's 15 feet long, six foot feet high, and I initially named it Severe Weather, because I think, you know, we are moving every day toward more severe weather. I understand. Can you talk about the symbolism within this particular painting, and is, is it still under the same title? Uh, no. Uh, I changed it to stormy weather. Why? I was inspired by the stormy weather that the president, Donald Trump, had gotten himself into with all his lies and, and policies that are just causing him and the nation an awful lot of problems. So I changed it to stormy weather. So talk to us about this. Well. Um, a few years ago, NASA asked me to make a painting for their ability, for their building they were building, sustainability base, and I decided to make a painting that had a 20-foot infinity sign in it, and it was golden. And for this painting, I decided to have pieces of the symbol that represents sustainability, the infinity sign, to have an infinity sign broken up in pieces being broken by, in this particular case, the immigrants. And I'm all for the immigrants, but as the weather gets worse and worse and the sea level rises and the crops die off, there's gonna be greater migration of people who really need help. And here they are breaking through the, their own infinity sign, their own sustainability. And over here, this to me is sort of like the wind, and what is the wind doing? It's blowing a whole bunch of weather vanes off their stands and, and uh, just flying out, and then there's people flying out, and somewhere over here, we can't see it too well, is, for example, a house that is now being, is underwater. So my goal was to make a painting about the future weather. And unfortunately, it's going to be the less educated and the less economically secure people in this country and, and in the world that will be most adversely affected by increasing climate change. Absolutely. I know we've got some more. Well, what's, uh, 
What's this? This is another 15 foot by 6 foot painting, and it is called Gone with the Wind is the Electric Grid. And Gone with the Wind was a book. Mm -hmm. Maybe they even made some songs, and it just reminded me. You know, I'm always taken to these things that already exist. The previous painting, Stormy Weather, yes. Stormy Weather, Lido Horn. Now yes. That My Gallant Together. And so I thought about why must we worry about the electric grid being blown away. A lot of it has to do with the United States government not investing and, and taking the threat to the grid. I mean, when, but we do see the wind has become so horrendous. It's blowing down poles. And, and it's just going to blow away much of the electric grid uh, in, in all sorts of of parts of this world. And so, you know, here's a pole coming down. Here's part of the federal government holding up a smokestack that's feeding more greenhouse gases out. And here is the Capitol, and it's right on a chimney mm -hmm. that represents to me the fossil fuel industry. And, you know, the wind is just going to break these two in part in pieces and we might wind up you know if you lose your electric grid significantly we take several steps back toward the caveman days or the dark ages and that's what i try to depict here got it gone with wind is electric grid this is a painting i made i think in my first year of painting oh. and god i i have always had it stored away and never really cared for it, but so, now... So, Michael, just for context, when, what year was this done, this particular? I, I hope, I hope I'm not, uh, could be 1998. Ah, okay. So uh, 20 let, years, about 20 years no, ago. No, I take that back 11 years ago. 11, 11 years, years ago. 11 years ago. Okay. And I call this impact of climate change on our culture. And culture because I decided to tap into imagery that great artists have used. Like, for example, this is, for those who really have a good background in art, is a Hokusai wave. And here's the wave coming up and going over somebody's face. Here is three sunny side eggs inspired by Dolly's work. And it's on a person. And one could say that as the weather gets hotter and hotter and hotter, these eggs are roasting. We will be increasingly roasting. And this, a lot of people will recognize, is from Matisse's mm -hmm. Dancers. And here, I, I think that's a horn of plenty, at mm -hmm. least my opinion. Out of the horn of plenty, which is what we have today, that's our lives, our environment, we are now falling out of it. Oh, it's not good to fall. Over here is a head by Dolly. And that head is just watching down here what's happening. And like a lot of people today, we're not doing anything significant about slowing the growth of climate change. And here is a piano. I think it was Rothenberg. I think I saw a painting he made of a a piano melting, and who knows what's going to happen when it melts. So this was impact of climate change on our culture. Mm -hmm. And it's only four by six feet. Oh, got it. Small painting. This one I made also uh, in my first year of painting about 11 years ago. And I said to myself, let's take a look at what our government and other organizations are doing to take care of the economy, us. And, and I noticed we're building factories that are sprueing out greenhouse gases. We're building SUVs, greenhouse gases. And I said to myself, if, this is what we're painting on our walls today, Einstein's equation, cars, people building. And if we continue to go with increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, 
you know, we are constantly threatening our existence and maybe it can happen. Our civilization can go away and it might go, civilization might go away for a million years mm -hmm. and, and then maybe a new civilization would come back and what would they do? They'd find on our walls like this black image, this car, this, this and they would paint their images mm -hmm. and it would be cave art. Right. Before we go on to, to the, um, some of the work that you're doing right now, um, what motivated you to start your series of paintings on the California climate plan? How did that come it, to be? It's, it's like this. If you were to ask Albert Einstein, where did he get his great ideas for his three great developments, he focused on something that he could stand on, and it was the speed of light. And once he got that idea, I can stand on it because it's constant, these other developments came. I look at Governor Brown, I look at the state of California's climate plan as something real. It's an asset. It's a reference point. I can stand on it. Okay, we all can stand on it. And I said to myself, why don't I make a series of paintings that further help the public, even the subject matter experts, gain a better feeling and insight into the value of California's climate plan. So I took some of my paintings on, the thr on threats that we just talked about, just some of them, I have others, and I put them in this package, the threats or what is, the requ what is requiring, requiring the need for a climate plan or a French climate plan, et cetera. And then I looked at California's climate plan and I said it has six major or fundamental goals. Why don't I paint each one of those goals? So that was the genesis of that. So how does one go about painting a plan? Well, the first thing is one better read the plan. But by the way, we're talking about hundreds of pages. Uh, but the second thing, it really helps to have an understanding of the elements of plans of strategies. If you don't have in your head the elements of what, what, a, what a plan is, uh, you have a hard time. And I want to say, when I got the idea to paint California's climate plan, it took me about two months to think about how do you cut this beast? And let's see, all plans have goals, okay? Goals. Mm -hmm. So I, we have six goals. I decided to paint each one of them. And goal plans have strategies. Mm -hmm. I painted a few of the strategies. And when we, a little while ago, we talked about the threats, right? Well, you know, goals are up here where we want to go to a better place. We really want to go to a future situation. Remember the word situation. All the threats fit into the present situation. You know, the present situation are all these threats that are happening. And so, I am painting the goals, some more of the threats and the strategies, and maybe I'll, I'll paint a few of the principles. Understood. So briefly, Michael, can you tell me what's the status of these paintings now? Where are you with regard to how much have you done? How much do you have to go? Where, where, where does it stand now? I don't have to paint any more strategies. I have so many of them now. I don't have to paint any more threats, really. I have painted uh, two of the six goals. Can you share those with us? Oh, sure, sure. This is a photo from Stanford University that was taken a couple of weeks ago, and it's at Stanford's annual Silicon Valley Energy Summit. And in the lobby of this palatial building at Stanford, it's called the Arriaga Alumni Conference Center, in the lobby they put this painting, which is my interpretation of goal number six of California's climate plan, which is simply safeguard California. And I read what they wrote about that goal, and I decided to make this painting 
I'll be willing to touch on the painting for a moment. Please. These three people are people that were at Stanford Silicon Valley Energy Summit when this painting was on display. And of course, that's me. I, I can't remember who he is. This man is the head of energy at uh, Foothill College. And this woman is very interesting. She is from a French company called Electricity of France, the largest French energy company owned by the government for the most part. And she is working on a project with Stanford University to document uh, a half a billion dollar energy system that the Stanford developed. And she's documenting it. And uh, she's a woman who sort of has been assigned to me to help me work on another painting. And behind me is this 20 foot six foot high painting. There's nothing about mm -hmm. my ego. I don't have much of an ego. <laughs> and I took the approach that there are four important thoughts today with respect to surviving and prosper in the new environment we're going to. And I painted each one of them to, to tell the story. And right back here, you see this yellow? Mm -hmm. This is the infinity sign again, which represents sustainable. Mm -hmm. We need to do everything that's sustainable. This spring over here represents resilience. We need to do everything to prepare for the hits and to be able to spring back from them. These two poles are like the poles the Egyptians used when they were moving something heavy. Another thought is to adapt. We have to adapt to our environment. We have to be prepared to move. And then up here, riding on top of the infinity sign, is my friend, Don Quixote from La Mancha. And he represents the last, and, and the threat I sort of like, uh, the thought I like the most, mitigation. Mitigate is to go out and reduce the threat that's coming at you. And who better than the man who went out to fight windmills, and here he is, going out to fight a very hostile windmill. So this is Safeguard California. Great. And you said you have another one more, and so I'd one like to more. get to that, and we'll yeah. continue goal, our move. Goal number two of California is to reduce 50% of the petroleum used in vehicles by 2030. And this over here is sort of what's going to happen to the internal combustion engine type world. You know, it's going to be, the engines are going to be knocked right out of the cars, symbolically. People working in the industry are just going to have to find something else. And, um, and you know, if you want to invest in offshore drilling for oil off the shore of California, this is probably going to, what's going to happen to money. Yeah, I'll, I'll come some gold, but at the end of the day, your money is going to go into the toilet. And over here is what has to do with how uh, the state wants us to work for the goals. For example, this big bar is really, we, we want everyone to electrify everything because you, knew, you need less energy to do things. The, st the state wants to build high-speed trains it wants to give birth, help give birth to the electric car. And in effect, what Governor Brown's plan, which was really Schwarzenegger's plan also, is to take like scissors and break the carbon dioxide that is forming around the state and around the earth. Mm -hmm. So that's the second goal. And I'm right now working with Stanford and Electricity of France to make uh, another goal, which is double the energy efficiency savings of existing building. That's, wa that's wonderful. Well, in the remaining time that we have left, um, what's the time frame t for you to achieve the painting of the other four goals that remain? I plan to finish the whole project by the end of this year. I only have four goals. Uh, actually, uh, one of them is you know, partially painted. I'm going to finish it, mm -hmm. but I'm already thinking about what I want to take on at the beginning of 2019.
2019. Right. Well, you, you know, you had mentioned Stanford because I know you've displayed there. Is there anything that they have kept uh, within their own collection of yours? Or? Um, yes, the energy department uh, has one of my works that they are displaying in, in their building. Uh, but um, I'm already booked for 2019 for the Silicon Valley Energy Summit at Stanford in June of next year. I'm booked for that. But what I'm doing, so I'm thinking, I'm, I really want to, in 2019, I want to go possibly paint other countries' mm -hmm. climate plans. Mm -hmm. Well, you had, you had several times mentioned France. I know that they're very active. In fact, I believe that they have offered, uh, because uh, this government is sort of discouraging, that the French government under Macron has offered uh, scientists and people that are dealing with this field within this country to come to France and to deal with it there. I mean, yes, the, the French put me under that umbrella and invite me to come there. But France interests me in terms of making their climate plan because if we take a look at how much greenhouse gases per capita you and all the people in California are emitting, it's like about that much okay mm -hmm. and and we are working very hard to bring it down but right now if we take a look at per capita emissions for france they are only that high they're about half the emissions of the united states so france is one of the countries i would like to paint so that i can bring attention in the case of france to how they succeed at, at only having this much emissions per mm -hmm. person, where we are, are that much. So within the four goals left that you're going to be completing by the end of the year, any one of those giving you any particular problems or challenges in the way you're thinking about it or how you intend two, to Two things to come to mind. One, the, I'm on goal number three right now, which is double the energy efficiency savings in existing buildings. That's a challenge enough to make a 16, 15 foot by five paint, how to articulate that. But then I'd like to always go the next step. And the next step might be to show an important solution that we could adopt that would help the state attain that goal. Stanford invested a half a million dollars to put this new energy system together to more than double the energy efficiency. Half a million or half a billion? Half a billion. Half a billion. Mm -hmm. Half a billion. And Stanford has uh, invested a half a billion uh, to take a different approach to doubling the energy efficiency savings in buildings. And so I've been working with Stanford now, must be seven or eight meetings, <laughs> where I'm trying to learn what they did and at the same time find a way to use Stanford's as an example in this next painting that will do two things, articulate California's climate plan goal number three, and one example of how to attain it. So that one, you know, I'm, I'm working on right now, but mm -hmm. and of course, it's, you know, it's, it's very complicated. But I'm also thinking another one, which has sort of political complications uh, in in working on California's climate plan my goal has to be to help educate and inform and help California's climate plan as much as I can which can only really be a little be a success but one of the goals that troubles me a bit is that, that I have to paint is uh, double the amount of renewable energy that is made in this state um, well, renewable energy includes gas, and gas is also a, a considerable emitter of uh, greenhouse gases. The other issue is there's many, many uh, scientific experts who have studied California's plan, and they question whether the plan will generate enough clean energy to meet the state's need for energy. So I may paint um, 
the shortfall you know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that uh, some of the scientists believe is going to happen and i might paint some of the solutions that are not being adopted right now in california That's and i know this is not going to help california's climate plane no, I plan understand. I understand. in the short term but okay well i i think that there's something very very exciting going on uh, in the sense that people don't have to go to France to see your artwork because on um, the 21st of October you're going to be opening a show of your artwork uh, called uh, Michael Killen's Art Addressing Climate Change at the First Unitarian Universalist Church in San Francisco. Th from what I know of you, this is normally not the kind of venue that you used to display your art. Yeah, uh, the, the event in San Francisco in, in October will be more for the general public. And I've had very few uh, exhibitions that were for the general public. I've had two at, Stan, uh, at NASA. And really, the people that are invited are people who are really into this stuff, scientists, etc. And I've had six or seven shows at Stanford, and these were all paid shows, but uh, like uh, the Silicon Valley Energy Summit, and it really only appeals to people who are involved in managing the sustainability of their city, their state. Uh, so the, the, they're not the shows I've been in, including the one with uh, the United States Department of Commerce, the United States Department of Interior, these weren't people off the street. You know, they were executives, scientists, uh, and I've been very happy with this. But the, the show on the 21st of October will be open to the public. And I'm happy, I'm delighted. I didn't ask for the show. In fact, I'm still getting comfortable and trying to accept to the fact that I have to get the art ready for the October 21st, but I'm delighted with all of it. Well, I think we're all delighted with it, and we're always delighted to have the opportunities to spend a little bit of time with you and get caught up with regard to the important work that you're doing to educate people and to uh, show people what's going on in California and the world. And um, it's always a pleasure, and it's my pleasure, Michael Killen, to have this opportunity. I thank you, and uh, we all thank you for the good, good work that you're doing, my friend. So thanks for being here. And I have to thank you for giving me this opportunity. You know, as a talk show host, I always ask the questions. And I, it's, in a way, delightful that somebody asks me questions well, for a change. You answer them very, very well. I appreciate that. And that's it for today's Killen Report. I'm Jonathan Clyde. Until next time, have a pleasant day.